Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another amazing episode of the Midheaven Podcast. This is your boy, a peace dealer. And I'm Candice Marie, and we are back, and I hope everybody is ready to rumble. Ding, ding, ding. We have some very interesting topics to cover in this one. This was a, I don't know, this was just something that we were just like, you know what, let's just come, let's just do it, fuck it, we're going live. Yeah. Type shit. It's necessary. As a man, I have to do this too. So I'm just going to lay the groundwork, okay, or the ground rules. I am the moderator. I am Switzerland. I am neutral. I am not getting involved in this bullshit. Word. But I will definitely help serve up the tea. So... With that being said, Mike, you have had quite a week in internet land, have you not? Happens every now and then, yes. I mean, I love a good controversy. I feel like it's almost too. expected in any entertainment type position. You know, like if you're not pissing people off, then you're not doing your job. If you don't have haters, you're not really on. You're not doing it right. I just, it's, it's, for me, it's like a, I don't know. I very rarely have drama with people. I mean, I have drama with people, but like, I, I am very like neutral about it. Like, I'll handle shit man to man. Exactly. That's why I like to do it. But it seems as if like you're a little down because of the events that have happened. So let's just let's just let's just cut to the chase. So there was some beef. There was some hurt feelings. There were some people who took things the wrong way. There are some people who might have jumped to conclusions. Maybe. I don't know. No, definitely. And yeah. it seems as if you feel the need to kind of clear the air a little bit. And we'll just kind of, yeah, we'll cut to the chase. So there was some drama with you and David Palmer, the Leo King. Unfortunately. Okay? And my question is, is not only what happened, but what is it that you would like to say to get ahead of this? Because supposedly he feels as if you know you did him dirty which is hilarious but you know i mean i see both sides of the situation i can see where people took it personally yeah. but i also feel like if we're in the business in the industry of wanting to unite people mm -hmm. i get it business is business i understand that i've had those conversations and those squabbles and those issues too but like if it goes beyond that and it's friendship and you're kind of left and you don't have that closure, is there anything you want to say? Maybe just to clear the air? I mean, because you're feeling a certain kind of way. Yeah, there's several things I'll mention. First of all, I approached this uh, assuming I was dealing with a friend and a brother. And, you know, as professional as I like to keep things, I realized that this is somebody who's not the same David we or, or most people grew to love when he first started. Um, and this is someone who's way more uh, into their image, being a celebrity and money. But other than that, you know, before we look at just me and him, we need to take into context that the context or concept of people falling out of graces with him and him being the victim did not start with me happened with Dylan, the spirit advisor. It happened with his ex-wife. It happened with, you know, several people. So I would say personally, um, there were several red flags that I've been seeing that if I paid attention to, I would have, you know, bowed out gracefully and walked away. Um, and it's just kind of really disappointing when a lot of people have negative things to say about him and I'm the one defending him openly on platforms. Now that I think, you know, given what's happening is really stupid uh, concerning the way that I realize now I've been treated. So one thing I want to address is there's a huge misconception that I brought this to social media first and that I started this. I did not start any of this. Um, it's unfortunate, but when I address drama or when I bring it up, people try and play me like I'm the Gemini looking for problems. Everything concerning this, I only made public because he made public and I'm addressing what he said. A lot of this started because I posted an email that he had sent because 
when I created my new agency, consulting agency, clearsightconsulting.net, check it out. Got dope ass readers, got dope ass um, really individuals. Uh, I didn't realize this until after the fact, but, you know, everyone was congratulating me on that post that I put everything out. And of course, the Leo, the king of Leos had to make it all about him where everyone think about how that looks. Everyone's congratulating me. And instead of him congratulating me, which I would expect he would do, the things he comments are, oh, you didn't even tell me about this. I guess you're not in high vibe anymore, which what is that? You're taking confidential contractual information and you're putting that out there on Instagram. Am I wrong? Because no one would have known that I breached terms of contract if he didn't write that. Is that right to say that technically you're I mean, if somebody's going to come public? out and they're going to make that information public, you at least have the right to defend yourself, whether it's right or wrong or breach of breach of contract or not. This is. But is it is it fair to say that he put out private information on a public platform where people are congratulating me? And as a Leo, I guess he felt jealous that I got some sort of attention and made it about himself. But we don't even have to say that. I have to say that because. For me to post that email, which to me was transparency, I had to let people know I couldn't be answering people left and right. Why are you off a of high vibe? Why are you off a of high vibe? So I took the email he sent and I said, hey, I'm not in high vibe anymore. There's no bad blood. They're going their way. I'm going my way. He even commented, I only want to see your success. Congratulations. Right. Or, or he didn't say congratulations, keep moving forward, you're right. Even though, you know, he didn't like how certain people saw through that BS and were calling him out, and he didn't like that I didn't defend him in the comments. So he started saying some foul stuff about me that weren't true, and I had to address those rumors, which I'm gonna speak on. But this is so very important, because later in a phone conversation with him, he's playing victim, wanting to switch it up, that I'm releasing confidential information. When I saw that email, I instantly reacted, screenshotted it and posted it. If I had scrolled down, I would have seen that it was confidential and I wasn't supposed to share that. And when I saw that, I deleted the email. The only thing that I can say without a doubt that from the get go, even on the phone with him, I let him know, hey, I'm going to take responsibility for the fact that if I knew you would have felt a certain way about me doing this, even though you say that I'm your brother, and your friend, or you could, you consider me a friend, you should have been happy for me. But if I knew that I should have spoken to you, I would have talked to you, left high vibe and moved on. I didn't expect for you to instantly terminate my contract off of an email last minute, because most people, of course, would if they plan to leave a network, they'd be like, hey, I'm starting something new. I'm going to leave this one. I didn't plan to leave that network. I plan to cross promote both. I didn't see it as competition, but obviously and reasonably he did me being terminated from high vibe. I had no problem with him letting me go even by email. I had no problem with what I had a problem with was him lying, talking down to me in my comments, which like a lot of people came to me talking about, hey, I don't like the way that this grown man is coming to your platform saying all these weird, nasty things about you. And for him to say that I damaged his image based off of actions he did really shows the type of person he is. But the reason why I wanted to mention him posting what he posted is because he's basically, you know, disrespecting me, yelling at me, saying over the phone that I I put confidential in, uh, information out there in an email when the only thing that I posted was an email saying that because I breached the contract, I'm terminated. That's it. There's nothing else that's being revealed. And for him to duplicitously give me the impression that I did something wrong when the day before he said literally the same thing on social media, he brought it to social media first. If he didn't post that, I wouldn't have to address any of the rumors he said. So any of uh, any narrative out there that I put drama out there or started it. If this grown ass man called me and let me know how he felt instead of me finding out on the Internet 
none of this would have to even be public. And so the reason why I feel a certain way is because he's putting this impression out there that I hurt him that, oh, I gave you everything. I paid for this. I have receipts. I can prove it. Please don't play that game. I have receipts. I have receipts of three jet purchases. The first plane ticket he bought, which put me on a commercial jet. I didn't even know that there was flights like that. I bought the next three flights. I brought the next three hotel rooms, which I wanted to do. I wanted to pay for my own thing, but to give the impression that you're paying for everything when there are events that we threw that I spoke for that you got pay-per-view ticket sales and in-person ticket sales that Dylan, the spirit advisor walked off because you didn't pay him. I didn't even know you didn't pay him because you didn't pay me. And you're telling people that you paid for everything we did. I have a problem with going on his platform, telling people that I'm gossiping and talking about his ex-wife, which is a total lie, putting out this weird energy that he's a victim. I have a problem with because it's a lie trying to act like I broke contract, revealing confidential information that he himself brought to social media on my post, because instead of congratulating me about what I did, he wants to make it about him is duplicitous and misleading. And obviously he's projecting his own feelings. The only thing that I didn't really like really was that he tried to make what I did to step out and step into my destiny seem like it's shady and that I was stealing from him. I don't have to steal from him. The only reason why I did high vibe in spite of so much advice to leave and do my own thing was to help him out. There's so many people who got to know me from that platform that wouldn't if I didn't help him out like a brother, you feel me? And so I, re I just really felt like it was really immature, selfish and misleading to lie to people like that because he's hurt and he doesn't like because it it didn't start with me too. shout out to Jax. Jax left earlier to build his own uh, online school and he was talking down on Jax before too, talking like, oh, yeah, he, I gave him all this resources and he left and it seemed like his issue was that he left to do his own thing. So I just kind of want to frame what's happening with me isn't exclusive, but the way that he's handling it is just revealing aspects of his ego that show why a lot of people are turned off from him. But he needs to keep my name out of his mouth and he needs to stop really putting out this weird energy that I did anything shady because what I'm doing you and I used to work for Lada and back in 2017, I had my own group. I have those receipts, Mystic Illuminations, an incorporated business out of Texas. I had a consultation group that we actually had readers. Everything I'm doing now is everything that I already did before the concept of future life that I helped build existed. So the concept that I'm copying ideas is a lie. The concept that he needs to be hurt for any reason when I let him know over the phone that I, if you felt that way, I would take responsibility. I should have told you, but all that other extra shit about him playing the victim and me talking about his ex-wife, because I commented on a comment on Instagram saying, when someone asked me what psychic predicted this, I said, Hey, his ex-wife had a pick a card reading that detailed this shout out to the gem goddess, because I was arguing with you in that video. She was talking about, yeah, you seem to have some opportunity or something that you need to let go, but you don't want to let go. And I was like, gem goddess, stop doing this right now. I know what you're talking about. She's like, yeah, you don't want to let it go. And I was like, stop doing this. And all I did was talk about that video. I did not, I didn't, I purposely made it amicable so that we can move on. But he made every way to make it more dramatic talking about oh you're talking about my ex-wife i can show receipts about stuff stuff that okay. makes no sense okay time out yeah i got I'm getting a little i got bit a couple needed. no 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 i have some stuff to say and i like i said i'm neutral um number one from what i understand he went live and said some shit and got upset especially in regards to his ex-wife I have nothing to do with these people, so I. I don't, if I, I talked about his ex-wife first, of I all, have receipts. I have receipts about right. this situation. Thank you. Because when the videos came out, I didn't want to comment on it because I didn't want to add fuel to the fire. Because I'm like, I'm not gonna do that. Right. But I sent you a message and I was like, "Yo, are you okay? You okay with what happens? Everything all right?" We talked a little bit, and you straight up said to me, "Please tell me why." In a reading that I saw by Gem Goddess. She predicted this in a spread reading. 
I have the receipts for this. And I'm and, and I'm and I have nothing to do with this. I'm neutral. But I'm just saying the second that all of this started, I understood off the bat from the very get go that really what happened was David seems to have missed construed what you were saying Completely. and then it it was just like all hell broke loose from there okay now two my second thing is you did try to call david and talk to david about hashing it out whether it's hashing oh, yeah. it out on the phone and then doing it live but david didn't want to do that you have to understand this is a grown-ass man this is not a 20 year old this is someone who's in his 30s so like you know um even to get like there's no reason and that's that's what i'm talking about the red flags you know like i should have walked away a long time ago when i found out that this man trashed me and christopher wateki someone who i've seen give david palmer a platform to be the leo king eventually completely trash both of us i'm finding out by two women who are like yeah dave is not your friend like you think he is. he doesn't even know that i know this because i confronted him when i got told that and i was like i apologize first of all like hey i didn't know that you felt a certain way about me staying in your rv and he was like no man if i had a problem i'd tell you which is how i knew he was fake because he doesn't know that two women already told me how he felt but he couldn't tell me that so this is where i didn't take but offense you, you, you guys were friends and you stuck with it because you guys had been friends exactly and like i figured you know what he i'm not the only one he talks about you know he he what, what he said about chris was way worse than me and he's talked about his ex-wife and other people too so i'm like you know what this is the narcissistic leo side of his personality that because what he's doing is so important i'm unwilling to overlook that because it's not about the money for me if it was about the money for me i would have hounded him for that some people walked out because he didn't get paid I didn't get paid. I didn't care because I'm reaching people who need to be reached. And, you know, despite commission sales, I might have gotten paid. There are certain events and, and recorded videos to this day I have not been paid for, which I don't care. But I do care because he's telling people that he paid for this that I did. He paid for this that I did, which if you paid for everything I did, why am I paying for so flight why is tickets that to information do work that I'm not getting but paid? Why is that information not confidential? exactly I'm that's what asking, i'm saying I'm just so he's trying to ask. he's trying to flex legal lingo like i'm doing something wrong but based on your own definition you brought it to social media first the first person to bring it there was you when you commented on my post saying i'm kicked out of high vibe which i didn't even realize until after the fact which i just think is weird as hell that that you're that he's acting that way so let me okay so his Be company w before before uh you say that i just wanted to say really quick like there's no reason why i should have found out from two women what he said about my back and that's when i realized you know when we were speaking over the phone to kind of answer your question before about me talking to him about hashing it out he called he didn't call uh craig called me craig shot me a call which i respect i know he defended david but i respect the fact that craig called me to talk about it david texted me and said hey i'm going to go live on instagram to talk about you and if you want to call me you can and so i call him immediately and you know he's yelling at me for some bullshit and i basically let him know look you're because he was concerned about his image that he thinks I destroyed or whatever or hurt. And even though, you know, all I did was say that and now I never played victim once. I literally said there's no bad blood. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Even now, if you still like the Leo King and if you want to watch him, I'm not telling you not to watch him. He's still good at the astrology he does. I'm not telling people not to like support or whatever, but I need to tell you the facts because they want to say lies about me. So I gave this dude the opportunity. Hey, you're going to talk about me. Why don't we both go live together so that we can address this as men in front of an audience? And I can admit live that, hey, despite what I feel, I breached your terms of contract. You have every right to terminate me.
You have every right to let me go because I didn't do what your contract said. I have no problem with that decision. I never once complained. Oh, he kicked me off of high vibe. I never once said that. I said, there's no bad blood. We're moving forward. But he wanted to push rumors about me that aren't true. He wants to give this impression that I was sneaking behind his back, trying to take his clients, trying to take his ideas. He's talking about during the phone call issues he had with me promoting a membership I had on videos where I'm promoting his platform. Like on the video, it says go to high vibe, but he's mad that I had my membership on the first link. So it's clearly about the money for him. And the thing that I had the biggest issue with was if you had that much of a problem with this, why am I hearing that for the first time now? You could have called me about this and nothing like this would be an issue, but I'm hearing about this now because he's only comfortable talking behind my back. And that's really the unfortunate part about it. So, you know, I let him know we can talk on Instagram live. We can talk wherever you want to go. I told him it's not that serious. He didn't like that. I said that and he hung up on me. So he hangs up on me and proceeds to go live and say bullshit. That's not true. Playing the victim. There's no reason why he should be hurt. There's no reason why he should be hurt. I didn't do anything hurtful to him. There's no reason why he should be giving the impression when he says I talked about his ex-wife. People who didn't see that thread will think anything and think, oh, he's gossiping about her. When all I said was that your ex-wife gave me an accurate pick. And she didn't even give it personal to me. I went on her YouTube channel and saw accurate pick a card reading. I talked about the pick a card reading, not about her. And he took it that way because he knows what he's doing and he wants to sabotage whatever, you know, new venture I'm doing to make me look shady. And I don't appreciate that as someone who stood up to defend you in the face of true shit people say about this dude. So it is what it is. Um, it really just taught me not to ignore red flags. And I'm glad that not just me, a lot of people were able to see more his true colors. I'm just disappointed this is, this though. This is some Saturn shit, dude. Oh yeah. So, Cause isn't like your Mercury conjunct his moon, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then you've got Saturn and the Jupiter square. I mean, Saturn going into your 10th house, putting all of this stuff aside, you knew shit was gonna happen. It was oh, gonna yeah. square off with your Venus and it was gonna square off with your Pluto. I but mean, like, it was... I wasn't I wasn't planning to do like two time him. Like if, if I wanted to leave, I was planning to stay, which lets you know, you know what I'm saying? I, if 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 I knew he would have felt a certain way, I would talk okay, to him. Okay, this is where I have questions. So you were employed through High Vibe through California. Well, this right? is, here's the thing. I'm not his employee, I'm no, his independent but the, contractor. This is where I'm going but with yeah, this. So you're a California. contractor. Right. 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 Did you sign a non-compete clause? Yes, there was a non-compete clause in the contract. So that's why I say his decision to terminate me is fair. I never once complained about that. And if if he interprets that as competition, he has every right to. So, but OK, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. You're straight. So if you signed a non-compete clause, obviously you acknowledge that you know, why you were let go and right. you were fine with it. Yeah. But did he not hire you while you were still in the midst of having Absolutely. your other company? Well, well, what he so told us, what he told us was, and I asked him specifically, I was like, hey, you know, if I have readings here and I'm doing stuff with you, can I still work on my business? And he's like, yeah, you can still work on your business. Those don't have what you have with us the same as what you have there. So I'm like, okay. Were you offering the same services? No, not at all. In fact, he has Uscreen. Uscreen is a special video service. And so because he had Uscreen, I didn't want to use Uscreen because mm -hmm. I thought that would be competition. If he's using a subscription service and I'm using the exact same subscription service, to me, that's a little bit too much like competition. Mm -hmm. Regardless, regardless, I will still acknowledge that now that I know what I know, I should have talked to him. I will acknowledge that I should have told him what I was doing before, even though I still don't believe that. Like, I'm a grown ass man. Like, I, I don't have to beg someone for permission. But if he felt that I should have let him know beforehand, I agree. And I will acknowledge I was wrong there. What he may need to acknowledge is that he doesn't need to be spreading these rumors about me being shady and stealing whatever when none of that is true. And he's really just hurt. And he really needs to keep my name out of his mouth. So do you, I mean, what about the friendship? 
Well, see, that's the thing. Like, I just didn't want to believe what my intuition, you know, many psychics and the red flags were telling me because there, there, I just wanted to believe that we were cool like that. I wanted to believe that it could be resolved. Um, but that's just the type of person he is. I don't take personal offense because what has happening to me has happened to so much people. If you think about all the people who've left high vibe, if you think about all the people who've left his life, and I think that's really getting to him. He's so much more sensitive now. He's constantly talking about a, a lot of people are telling me they just can't connect with him because of his ego. And he's always talking about what, how much he works every day. And, you know, it is what it is. I realized he never really was a friend to me like that. Personally, every time I would have done something that might have been a disagreement to him, he would threaten to kick me out, which is not what a friend does. These are red flags. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I didn't mind because I didn't really attach to that. If he kicked me out, I wouldn't care. I would have just left. But, you know, I just saw that as a character flaw. And I was too focused on the connections made through his platform that I felt I was helping to let that type of stuff stop. I mean, it's a really weird time. It's hard. It's hard. I mean, like, n none of this is any new to news to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, not in a sense of David. I'm not talking about that because I, I don't know him. Haven't worked with him. Right. Can't can't really go there. But I mean, I have a reputation for not playing well with other people. I do. And, I, and it's fine. It is what it is. Part of it is because I have a very <laughs> high work ethic and I have a conscience and I have morals and there are just some things I won't do. So right. that has caused some friction with two or three different entities that I have worked with over the last five or six years. Right. And ultimately, I feel like each and every experience, although it was definitely war. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, you're honest, went through my seventh house. It was yeah. a shit show. But but it really led me to kind of finding my own path and forging my own path and going my own way. So it's great. But I think what's really hard is like when you're in the business of selling spirituality, because that's basically right. what we're doing. That's yeah. what we're doing. Even if we're not promoting, promoting, promoting. It's hard because like you want to make friends, you want to find your tribe, you want to connect, you want to have that click. But at the same time, there's this weird line between being friends and then being business associates but let me just let me just stop you right there because it is a fine line between that but he just needs to stop being fake as hell he needs to be a lot more real with the way he deals with people and then he won't find the this toxic backlash that occurs to which he responds by playing the victim talking about no it's me blah, 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 and it just needs to stop and i just want to make sure we're clear i'm frustrated but as you've seen me you know defend myself against amber khan who blatantly lied about me trying to call cps on her child to which i received death threats to people from instagram i don't hate these people i still hope one day i can still you know patch things up with amber and we could be cool i i i personally consider both of them really good at what they do if you still support amber if you still support leo king you should still do that. Don't think I'll feel like you're betraying me if you talk to these people. I don't give a damn about any of that stuff. What I give a damn about is people lying about my name and people keeping my name out their mouth saying stuff that's not true, especially when you're way older than me and I'm the one who's supposed to be doing this childish shit. I'm the Gemini here, okay? Let me be the child. I shouldn't be the mature one out of everybody it's it's tasteless it's not cool and you're putting out a weird energy for people that a lot of people see through so i think what's needed is a live talk where we all address this but i'm willing to just walk away and move forward the only reason why i'm addressing this now is because things were said about me out there that weren't true when the when the opportunity for both of us as men to speak about it was laid on the table and you wanted to hang up on me and talk shit that's not gonna happen how like people treat you says everything about them and nothing about you exactly that's all i'm gonna say i mean and that's not me passing judgment but it's just if the friendship was a real friendship maybe you guys would have hashed it out and you would have been able to resolve it i see both sides i i can see where he got hurt i also know that he's a leo rising so just, you know, <laughs> everything's just like fucking his saturn right. and his venus placements and it's it's rough for him right now because he's having to come to terms with some stuff but i also know that we have to walk the walk and talk the talk mm -hmm. so we can't it's like 
for the life of me, I can't tell you. I mean, I'm a Sun Pluto. I will, I will ruin somebody's fucking will to live verbally, but I won't do it publicly. Right. I won't. I won't drag people publicly unless you come for me, because then the, there's gonna be a body count. That's the thing. Like, I never went on his platform, his page, saying anything disrespectful i don't do that so for you to come on my platform where people are congratulating me to make something about you is extremely childish and petty it really reveals everything about you and there was really no reason why as a grown man you couldn't talk to me about this if you had just picked up the phone and expressed your real thoughts about this then none of this drama would have erupted that you completely and directly created and, you know, would have been resolved. But you're far more comfortable talking about me behind my back. And you just didn't like that. I exposed that. And so now I'm the villain and you just don't like that. He does, doesn't like that. People saw through his bullshit. I think he doesn't want people to think that he's the bad guy either for for having to pull the trigger and do what he has to do, because. You know, he's a, at the end of the day, he's a businessman. And that's the thing. If he had left it at that, because he had commented that he wants to see everyone succeed. If he left it at that, that would be it. There'd be no drama. He didn't have to say all that extra shit that, oh, he's being shady in my comments to where people are having to message me like, wow, I've never I've I've lost I mean, respect for this guy. I can't believe he's talking about you like that. You guys each have your own following. So that's creating this weird. There's this narrative that he made. There's this narrative that because I was on high vibe, I got all this attention as if I didn't have my own following. Like you said before that. Yeah, you were. You were doing a lot of that so stuff it's before. Weird. I mean, you were in the trenches working with Lada and shit. So right. it's like. You know, I, I mean, it's hard because you get to that certain point where it's like you can be doing this work and you're just about to break through. And then once you break through and then then you are in the spotlight, it's a, and that's why I choose to roll stag <laughs> work with people because yeah, I up, because I can't. But but at the same time, I realize that. And this is part of the reason why we do this podcast is from from day one, when I started talking about this podcast, I was like, look, the world is this very divided place right now, yeah. politically and energetically. And there's just a lot of shit going on and a lot of stirring the pot. And to be able to encourage people to sit down and learn how to have a conversation and find the middle ground and communicate respectfully, even if you don't agree Right. This podcast, as silly as it seems, with us just drinking and talking about space politics, essentially what's going on is like we're encouraging people to actually get along and I don't know, man. I I, I don't know. Seriously. I, I, and this and despite all of that, despite all of that, I still admire the Leo King as a a personality. Like I still I, I, every, you just saw me express like my frustration, but I do not hate this dude at all. Like I could, I could still do a show with him. I could do whatever with him. I just know more who I'm dealing with, but I need to, I need y'all to see my raw feelings about this because I'm not going to excuse bullshit either. You know what I'm saying? Well, Saturn so, and Jupiter hanging out in your 10th house. You're, it's not going to let some stuff slide if it's exactly. not morally or ethically in alignment and it's a hard place to be in when you have those transits because it's not about standing up for yourself and, and clearing the air. It's more about what is just the moral high ground, I guess, when you think about it. So it's you are gonna have to do it. It's all about it's all about integrity now. Facts. I think that's that's all about integrity. It's all about integrity, yeah. yeah. And and you know, I realize the Chinese zodiac he's the uh the rat and I'm the horse and that's like horrible compatibility. Really? Yeah, like that they don't get along. And now I see how it just, you know, even though astrologically a pretty good um, compatibility, but the Chinese Zodiac does not match. So I think just a lot of it has to do with like, you know, the road to success is just people don't realize how hard it is and that it does manifest in a lot of challenges, not necessarily in terms of conflict, but it's hard because you end up making friends with people and aligning with people and working with people. And then as soon as you start to get an edge or as soon as you start to go your own way, mm -hmm. and this is... This is all of 2021 and 2022, yep. Saturn square Uranus of like, yep. well, what are we committed to versus where do we rebel? 
And certainly for tourist placements or tourist risings, there's a lot of rebelling. And I don't know. It's it's kind of that's it's another kind of a thing he was saying too that I wasn't committed to his app when you know I would put out weeks of content and then I would miss like a day or a week. And then it's almost as if I didn't put all that content out and it's like, where are you? It's just this entitlement, this narcissistic entitlement that I I really wasn't having. But other than that, you know, um, lesson learned. And the reason why I'm grateful is because it's really it's really allowed me to clear the air. And I'm just so focused on this new venture that I'm doing. It's just so amazing. And now there's no, it taught me for sure that the the south node does hold you back if you let it because i have a south node leo mm-hmm. and like mm-hmm. as soon as i let that go woo, we've been do you think this is still saturn return stuff oh absolutely but this is the aftermath okay so that's what i was thinking about when i was asking you because i was like when do you think it it ends like does it end when you're 31 does it end when it leaves the house does it end when it leaves the sign like and we've talked briefly because yours is where's your Saturn? Twenty four cap. Okay, so Pluto's still hovering there. Yeah. It's going retrograde. It's coming back. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's part beep, of that. Your seventh beep, house. Beep. Yeah. But eighth, all, ninth house. But yeah. what degree is your Saturn? A uh, moon twenty three, Saturn twenty four. Okay, so all right, got it. Yeah. All right, so it's got some Aquarius Pisces vibes. Oh yeah. It's awakening my uh, karma and my career potential do you think it's still opening all that stuff up for you oh yeah every day because you said like your saturn return you called it boring yeah and i call it boring compared to other people's saturn returns but for me it was incredible it was super incredible it 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 awakened me to where i am sublime it made me confront i say it's incredible but in a sense where all I did that Saturn return was face the shittiest parts of myself. Okay, because I was going to say, like, you're making, you're glamorizing what was right. probably, like, literally the worst three years of my <laughs> life. It was bad. And, pe- and people talk about, like, Saturn right. and Capricorn. I almost and died, too, by the way. Okay, right. with Saturn and Capricorn, Saturn, you know, being, the you know, the, the, the planet that rules Capricorn yeah. and... I'm born with, you know, the Jupiter opposition. Our like, sat, fun fact, our Saturn return brought in the apocalypse. Did I tell you my Saturn return story? Do you want to hear the five minute synopsis? Oh, shit. Let's do it. It's fucking bad. And oh, it, a lot of it was textbook, too. Damn. So I have Uranus at a two, Venus at a six, Saturn and Neptune at a ten of cap. And it's in the fourth house. And I have Jupiter in opposition. So it's like, okay. So Saturn goes into Capricorn, end of 2017, around the holidays. And I go back home to where I'm from, from Arizona. And I go to visit, on Christmas, my grandmother, who is living in like an assisted living home. And I go to visit her. And it was just the most horrific experience ever. It was bad. Like I go to visit her and she was just like super grumpy and was like not happy and not her bubbly self. And it was like the first time that I had seen my grandmother who was like in her 90s, like not coloring her hair. And I was like, whoa, I'm like, she's like actually older now. So it was like hard for me because she's like my mom. So I go home and get to visit there the first time. Really fourth house ish too. Dude, my fourth house was a shit show. Mm -hmm. So I get to visit her. And go and see, like, where I grew up and, like, the house that I didn't get to say goodbye to because my grandfather died. So that was, like, pretty depressing. And then I came back and it was, like, I was living in L.A. and I was living in a house, which was, like, way too small. But I loved East L.A. And my neighbors were fucking horrible. The house was falling apart. I was constantly dealing with, like, homeless people. Neptune. Damn. Hanging out and, like, always just encampments on each end of the street. Um, I got very sick with like an upper respiratory infection that was not coronavirus it was not corona but i was actually in europe at the time when the south node transited my neptune so saturn was still in capricorn and it was weird because i went overseas and then i got sick and i was like in bed sick for like three days in scotland scotland dublin so that happened and then if i go backwards i kept trying to move and i was going back and forth and whether or not i was going to move and it was like one thing after another and then Right when we got into 2018, when Saturn became conjunct my Saturn and my Neptune, my dad went into the hospital and he was in and out of the hospital for like months. And I was like trying to balance seeing clients 
and going 60 miles in and out of LA. When to, what happened? When Saturn conjunct my natal Saturn and my oh. Neptune. My dad was in the hospital. Damn. Yeah. And then my sister had a bunch of health issues and she was having like weird fainting, like epileptic spells. I don't know what it was, but she was having all kinds of weird stuff. Um, my dog had a bunch of health issues. Here's the here's the the real kicker. So obviously Saturn hit my Venus. So I was like in and out of a relationship for like three years. It was fucking terrible. Damn. And he was a cat moon. It was, <gasps> it was really bad. Sorry. Aries? Virgo, Virgo rising, Virgo, Virgo rising, Virgo sun, uh, Mars and Venus in Leo, on my south node. Ooh. I'm sure he's out there right now watching this. But um, so that happened. We went back and forth, whatever. I couldn't bring myself to move in with him. I kept my own place. So that happened. And I think the, the kicker was when Saturn conjunct my Neptune, and I'll never forget this. I had a party scheduled to go and work for some like corporate event. And it was like in LA in 2018 or 2019 where we had all those rains. It was like raining really heavy at the beginning of the year. And I was living in a place that was like three, like the lot was three or four feet below the house next to me. So if I would look out my bathroom door, I could actually see like I was like sub terrain. Like my uh, my house, my apartment was like below the next door neighbor's yard, Damn. which was abandoned, Neptune. So when the rain came in Damn. and it rained, it rained so much that it, came through my next door neighbor's yard and it seeped into the foundation of the house that I was renting. And I was in the middle of a session and I had a heater, like a little space heater on the floor that was plugged in. And immediately the floorboards or like the like the, the, the molding or whatever along the sides of the floor gave out because there was so much water next door and water rushed through the walls of my house in LA. Neptune, while I had a heater on the floor, Uranus, and my feet were on the floor, and the whole place filled up with water, and it was like literally a split second. I was, I don't even know how I did it, but I jumped up and I got on my table, and like there was two inches of water in my house, and then I watched this fucking electrical fire go on in my house while my house was flooded. I know, I probably should have died. Like the whole thing was just a shit show. It was like really, and I couldn't help but like afterwards laugh. And then Saturn retrograded, and obviously because of all that stuff happened, it was like trying to get me to move, but I would not move. Mm. So just everything that, that fixed happened on energy. with the Saturn return, and then Saturn moved into like, you know, with the Saturn and Jupiter and Pluto transit, and it all squared my moon. And then eventually I did move. So I guess like, you know, the silver lining is that like I'm super resilient, and I held out. But everything that happened from that it's like oh my god like the other side of the saturn return there's like all this like fruit right it's right, like right the, right the, the healthier business like the more structured the more secure the more stable like the better relationships like the better business like fuck dude i don't i don't even want to think about 27 eight years from now because it, the next saturn return dude that one was that was so gnarly yeah. and i knew because i i had a stellium in scorpio so when I had Saturn go through Scorpio, it was sextiling all my cat planets and I was already feeling it. Damn. So it was like nine years of hell. But I'm wow. alive and I feel so much better. I guess the other weird thing is that Saturn was on my Venus for like a year and some hairstylist ruined my hair. <laughs> my hair was silver. It was gray for a year. It was literally gray. Damn. And no matter what I did, I couldn't change the color of my hair. Mm -hmm. So finally it got better. It got lighter. But oh my God, dude, Saturn. Saturn is my ninth house of higher education. And uh, when Saturn's there, it delays your college graduation. So I told my sister years ago, oh, Saturn's in my ninth. So I won't graduate until 2020. And she rolled her eyes. And then she came up to me recently like, hey, you know, I got to give you props because I was skeptical before. But just like you said, you know, I graduated that year. And the third house is the house of moving. So at the end of June in cancer season, when my third house is active, I moved to my new apartment and then had a near fatal car accident where I should have died. But I walked out with like minimal scratches. Oh, my God. I remember seeing the photos from that. And that was the day after I wrote this rap song that called out all the pedophilia and bullshit. And I government. saw that. It just came out recently. Yeah, that was yeah. part two. It was wild. And, Fuck. you know, I'll, we'll see what they do for this one. But, you know, thank you guys for tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to leave it on a high note. Um, oh, well, hopefully the stuff clears up and like, you know, the clouds part and the sun comes out. And 
I don't know. I just wish everybody could get along. But I, I also know that's not necessarily the world that we live in. You know, hard times and drama and conflict bring out the true characters of people. So that's why. This I, is only the beginning. Oh, with the yeah. Saturn around his squares. And next year, the, no, the nodes go into Scorpio and Taurus. Mm -hmm. it, it's on. It, it's going to be on. I think, I guess, best piece of advice we can give is just uh, integrity. Be yourself. Yeah. And Thank y'all so much for the support. The support we've gotten on this podcast is just insane and more proof that this is what we're meant to do. And, you know, all love to y'all. Yeah, it's been it really awesome. Like, lot. it's been really good because I think that we, I w at least I went back and forth. I didn't want to come back to internet land for a little while, but <laughs> right. I'm glad to be back because uh, it's a good outlet. And, you know, you're like the only Gemini I can tolerate. So I get that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> all right well let's see what this one does kids um cheers, cheers to that until next time this is uh mike and candace at the midheaven podcast we will see all of you guys very soon enjoy the tea